Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we are back to working over on the Thompson Grinder Rebuild, and I've got some help in the shop today. Keith Hubbard is up from down in Jacksonville, and he has helped me out before. You guys may have seen him around. And uh, I thought as long as I needed to get this thing leveled up, I was going to take advantage of having some help in the shop. So, uh, Save you some trips. Yeah, so we're going to get the level out and try to get this thing leveled up. And normally when I'm doing this, I go adjust a foot. I have to get up and come up here and read my level. Go down and adjust a, a bolt. Go read my level. Up and down, up and down. Well, I'm going to let him do the up and down, up and down. I'm just going to sit here and look at the bubble and tell him what to do. That's the game plan anyway. So today's goal, I want to get this machine leveled out. I have over here a, uh, my, a very precision level that we'll be using to do this. In fact, I'm probably going to have to go get my regular machinist levels just to kind of get it roughed in, and then we will use this one to fine tune it. Um, once I get it leveled out, we're going to come over here and do an inspection on the ways using a Kingway alignment tool to uh, see how much wear is in them and get an idea of, you know, what we need to do to this machine to get it um, refurbished, whether we need to scrape it in, let it roll like it is, or what have you. So I'm sure there's some wear in it, but don't know how much. We're going to figure that out here in a minute. But the first step is leveling. Leveling is important on a lot of machine tools. Uh, you'll want to get your machine fairly leveled out just so that you'd have it sitting nice and level on the floor, particularly on something that has a bed that goes back and forth like this. If you have one end lower than the other, Gravity's going to want to pull it in that direction. If you get the machine leveled out, it just works a lot better. And when you're chasing very high precision, uh, just a little bit of time taking leveling a machine can make a big difference be, being able to machine something to a thousandth of an inch versus a ten thousandth of an inch. So, uh, you know, it's, it, that is a big step here. So anyway, we're going to get our levels out, get this thing leveled up, and I go from there. Let me go grab some of my other levels and we'll show you the process. So I got a bunch of different levels up here. This is overkill for what we're doing, but I want to talk a little bit about levels uh, when we get ready to level this machine. So not all levels are created equal. Um, the levels that I got up here are all machinist levels. And as one would expect, a machinist level is typically going to be a little bit more accurate than say a carpenter's level like you would use in a building a house or something like that. And uh, these levels are all calibrated. They're all calibrated to the point where the lines on here, we know exactly what they all mean. Um, and the resolution on these levels are different depending on what you're doing. For example, uh, these are stair at 98s. Uh, they're different size, different lengths, but they're all number 98s. And this is what we just call a, a regular machinist level. And I'm trying to remember, I think the resolution on this is every line on the vial, I think is five thousandths per foot. So that's five one thousandths of an inch per one foot. So if you, if you were to have the, a level that was one foot or 12 inches long, every time that bubble moved from one line to the other, you would be raising up one end of this level five thousandths of an inch. So by comparison, just so you kind of get an idea of what we're talking about, a human hair is about three thousandths of an inch. So a little more than a human hair on, under one end of this level, you can read that for each increment on this, uh, on, this, on this vial, okay? So very accurate level. However, not as accurate as this one. This is what we call a master precision level. And each line on this level is a half a thousandth inch per foot. So again, uh, you know, this is, you know, a human hair is three thousandths of an inch. So over a 12 inch period, if our 12 inch distance, if you were to raise it up one sixth of a diameter of a human hair, that would cause it to move one line on this level. So this is for fine tuning. This is for more getting things close. This machine has not been leveled at all. It is out by a good distance. So we're going to start by using uh, these levels down here and getting it leveled up as close as we can. Then we will switch over to a more accurate level uh, to do this. Notice too that I have these levels. There's two of them. There's one that is going left and right. There's one that's going front and back. When we're leveling this machine, we're leveling it in both directions simultaneously or at the same time. So 
Uh, not only do I have to get it leveled in this direction, I have to get it leveled in the other direction as well. Uh, and the way we're gonna adjust that is there are leveling feet around this machine. Uh, there's five of them on this machine, basically one in each corner, and there's an extra one in the middle up underneath the table. We'll start by just do, doing the outside four. Once we get it leveled, we will just kind of put a little bit of weight on this center one here. Uh, that's just to kind of keep the middle from sagging because the table is in here. Now, I've also got this level back here. This one is uh, what they call a fail precision level. It is also, uh, this resolution is a half a thousandth per foot, but the cool thing about this one is, is it has kind of a big bubble in the middle and you have lines going in all different directions. So when you use this level, you can basically level it in both directions at the same time because you're kind of, it's almost like a bullseye. You're trying to get that bubble in the very center of this thing. And, and it's gonna be again measuring in those that same half a thousand per foot resolution. So we will go to it once we kind of get the machine leveled up. So let's, uh, I'm gonna zoom you in on these, uh, these levels here. And we're gonna start by, we'll probably get one, one direction leveled and then we'll work on getting the other direction leveled. And once again, we get it kind of close, we'll switch over to one of the more uh, higher resolution levels to kind of fine tune things and get it really, really level. All right, let's get it. All right, I got you kind of looking straight down on the levels here where you can see the vials and you can see they're both ran uh, to one end and the other. Now, if you don't know which end to raise up and down, you can just pick one side up and see how the bubble moves. So, you know, we need to get the back end raised up on here. That's gonna cause my bubble to raise up and kind of come over here. So and it's gotta come up by a pretty good bit. Same thing here, we need to raise the back end up to get the bubble to go over there. Uh, I think that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by getting the back end uh, leveled up a little bit. And then once we get it close, we'll come over to this one. We'll probably have to go back and forth a little bit and uh, get these things fine tuned. Uh, but I'm gonna ask Mr. Hubbard over here, he needs to raise the, the two leveling feet on the back corners and uh, until we start to see that bubble move. So go ahead and start cranking on them. Uh, yeah, well, I'll tell you what, start on the other end over here because that's, um, that's the end that's gotta come up the most. All right, he's cranking up on the back corner back here and you can see the bubble is starting to move. All right, stop right there. I want you to come to the other side and raise it up a little bit as well so that we don't go too far in one direction. But we've actually got the bubble starting to move there. Uh, and like I said, we're gonna raise up this other back corner and try to get it kind of brought up a little bit as well because it's gonna to need to come up as well. So we'll let him do a couple of cranks. It's already moving again. Come on. All right, you can stop right there. We're not quite there yet, but I know that we've also got to bring up this whole side over here. So I'm not gonna go all the way. We're gonna let him go back to the other side. He needs to raise both of the the screws on the back side over here. We're gonna start working on getting this vial in there. And even if that one goes a little bit farther than what it needs to go, it'll be fine. Let's do this front corner if you don't mind, uh, since you've already done the back one a little bit. And as he cranks that front one, you're probably gonna see this bubble start to come back down this way, I think. No, it's going the other way. Come, come on up, you got a ways to go. Yeah, it is starting to ease toward me now, but that's fine because we still got to raise that other side up some more as well. All right, now we're starting to see this bubble move a little bit, so we're starting to affect things here. All right, I do one more crank on it and then go to the back side and raise it up a little bit more. I will note that I've got the manual on this grinder and it is saying to, to actually work off of these two surfaces here. When the machine was made new, these surfaces were ground parallel to this surface. This is not a wear surface, this one is. So these are actually better surfaces to go. All right, come back to the front. All right, we're moving them both in the same direction now. 
All right, go back over to the back now. I'm going a little bit past here because it looks like we're moving mostly on the front screw, but that's going to bring it back the other direction. So go ahead and give it another little bit of turn. It's that corner. Yep. Out. Okay. We'll bring up this corner over here. All right. And we'll just about just a little bit more of a turn right there. Now I want you to go actually lower that back corner a little bit. Maybe just a touch more. Oh, all right. Come over here to the front corner and let's raise it up just a smidgen. All right, so we've got this pretty well leveled out using these levels. Now we're gonna to switch to my uh, all way level and we're gonna look at it and thus we're gonna probably see, it's gonna look like it's out a lot more than what these do because of the resolution. So let me swap that out. So now I've got this uh, fell level on here and uh, I will just tell you right now that this level will make you pull your hair out because if you just breathe on this machine, those lines will move. It is that sensitive. So when you make adjustments with this level, you're not cranking that, that wrench on the uh, leveling feet. You're just barely tapping it. And even then you kind of have to wait for it to kind of settle out because it, it's just, it's that accurate. The good news is, is that we're pretty darn close to where we want to be right now. I mean, you guys are looking at this at a little bit of an angle where I'm, I'm able to look down a little bit more straight. I can't get the camera right above it because of the way the machine's built, but left to right, I mean, it's within a half a thou. And then in this direction, we're what one, about two and a half lines over. So that's about one and a half thou per foot uh, high. So we need to, again, we need to raise the front here by about a thou and a half to get it where it needs to go. We're gonna let that settle back out. And uh, we need to basically raise both sides because we front, left to right is good. We just need to kind of bring up the one. So hit this uh, front, both front screws, but I mean, just barely move your wrench on both sides. I, and see, I'm watching that bubble move. He just barely bumped it. And now he's gonna come over here. He's gonna bump the other side and do it again. You didn't really make much of a move there. Come on, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Now we're easing over this direction, which makes sense. He's raising that side. Do it one more time. All right, now come to the other side again. And hopefully we're gonna bring it back down in this direction now. So just barely bump it. There you go. Hang on a minute, don't do nothing. All right, do that about one more time, just about, about like you just did. Did you move it? All right. And we are less than half a thou in either direction right now. So maybe just a little, I think what we need to do is, is uh, bump this corner over here just a touch. I'm probably making a mistake. I probably should just leave it alone right here, but we're gonna, we're gonna just barely bump it. And I'm telling you, small, small adjustments that are all we need right now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do it one more time. Do it again. He's just barely tapping it. One more time. All right, let's come back over to the other side and I wanna raise it up just a bump and see if we can get this bubble to come back toward him a little bit. Too much. No, it's, it's fine. All right, I want you to actually bump the back corner now just a tuck bump. We're going to try to get it to move in that direction now. We're just a little bit over on these two sides.
Do it one more time. Do it one more time. Again. Again. One more time. All right, now come do the front corner again. This one? Mm-hmm. We are really, really close here. All right, hang on a minute. All right, guys, we're going to call that good enough. We may be a quarter of a thousandth off per foot, but that is, that's, that's close enough. And, and honestly, um, this level is so accurate that uh, just walking around on the floor will cause it to, to, to move the, the bubble around. In fact, when we're teaching a scraping class, a lot of times we'll get every, I'll get the level leveled out over on the surface plate and then we'll get everybody to come stand around the surface plate on one side and you'll see the bubble move to that side and then we get everybody stand on the other side of the surface plate and it'll move back the other direction. That's how accurate these are. Just standing on the concrete floor will cause it to move. We are well within, you got this level, this machine leveled out very nicely. So we're gonna call that good. All right, we're getting ready to bring the Kingway level tool over here and inspect the ways. And basically what we're gonna be doing is looking at any variations on the ways themselves, the wear surfaces where this goes on the front way versus the back way. We're gonna be looking at differences on a precision level in both directions, but as we move from one end to the other, and it'll give us an indication as to how much wear is in this, uh, on these surfaces. Um, before I do that though, these surfaces are, they got a little bit of junk on them, so I'm gonna take some precision ground flat stones, and we're just gonna stone these really good and um, get all the gunk off of them. And I can feel there's some gunk in there, and we're just gonna, stone these ways and get them nice and clean and flat or at least get the any burrs or any surface residue off. Now the nice thing is with these when you're using them you can feel when it's done and when I first started you could feel a little drag on them. These things are just going nice and slick back and forth so we've got all the surfaces on that one, this is a flat way. We got a V-way in the back. So I'm on this one. We're going to basically do both sides of the V-way. And again, I can feel there's just some, not so much burrs, uh, but there's just some like film on these things. And uh, this is going to take that off. And it will, these little small differences, we're, we're, the levels that we're going to be using on this Kingway tool, they're so accurate that even just a little layer of film will cause them to move and we wanna make sure we're not getting false readings. So I've got my Kingway alignment tool on here right now and basically what we've got is we've got this uh, kind of circular piece in here so it's, it's kind of sitting on three points, these two points and one point up front. And uh, we're kind of averaging out across those distances there. And what we've got on here is we've got two, again, very precision levels that are sitting on here, again, in both directions. And these levels, remember my, my master precision level, the one we were using a while ago, the one that had all the, uh, that would do it in both ways. I told you that one measured to half a thousandth per foot or five ten thousandths of an inch per foot. These levels, they're even crazier. These are three ten thousandths per foot. So every line on here, very, very fine measurements, and you can uh, adjust these by turning these knobs. Basically, you get it set up on here and you can fine tune it so you can kind of, even if this beam is not level, we get the level level. We get it close on height and then we can fine tune it. So I've got these going in both directions. What we're gonna do is we're gonna zero it out down here and we're gonna slide this down in increments, usually about the width of this piece here. So I'll just slide it down to here. We'll take another measurement and we will compare the level readings as we go. And based on the number of lines, we can do the math and we can actually calculate um, how much difference, how much variation there is in one spot to the other. Now the idea here is, is as this table has been moving back and forth, it's worn down these ways 
over the years as it has been used. When it was brand spanking new, it was, you know, probably dead nuts on, but it's been used. This machine was made in what, 1963, I think. So it's seen a lot of use over the years. How much wear is in the bed? This will tell us that and uh, kind of give us an idea, you know, whether we're out 10 thousandths of an inch, thousandths of an inch, or 10 thousandths of an inch. You know, so give us an idea of what kind of range. If it's way out, you know, we probably would send this off to have it reground and then scrape it in. If it's not out too bad, we'll just probably scrape it in by hand and, and just move on with it. Honestly, I'm probably gonna scrape it either way, even if it is way out, because I don't wanna have to send it off and have it ground. I'm just, you know, I would rather just do it all here in the shop. But uh, ideally you would grind it if it's more than about 3,000 square in it. Let's uh, start doing this. I'm gonna get a Sharpie pen and I'm gonna make some notes as I'm just gonna write it on the machine as I go. Right now we're gonna call this a zero and uh, we're gonna just slide it down. So we're gonna start right now. I'm just gonna slide it down again about right here. We'll let our levels kind of level out. And I can tell you right now, this one moved maybe about a half a line on it. And that one's still kind of finding its uh, way, but it's moved a little bit as wear. So there, there is a little bit of wear in here as expected. So let me go get a Sharpie. I'm gonna make some notes as we go. And uh, we'll try to map this thing out. Well guys, we've gone from one end to the other. About every six inches I stopped and took a measurement and I wrote them down on the table. Diagnosis. The diagnosis is, is that I am pleasantly surprised. Uh, <laughs> very pleasantly surprised. I've never inspected a machine that looked this good, to be honest with you. I, 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 I don't know what to say, but we've looked at it and, and I mean, I'm confident what we are. So basically what I have seen is when I look at the the change in numbers from this back way to this front way from one end to the other, it moved about one bubble on that uh, level, uh, maybe just a little bit more than that. And doing the math, again, it's three ten thousandths per foot. It's actually only 10 inches between those. So each level on there, each number in there in that direction is actually about two and a half thousandths difference in height. From one end to the other, the maximum deviation, the, the the maximum number between my lowest value and my highest value was about three ten thousandths of an inch. So again, one tenth of the size of a human hair. Okay, put it in perspective. Now, in this direction from end to end, um, a little bit more variability, but even there looking at the highest number and the lowest number, so the maximum deviation from any place on here is nine ten thousandths of an inch. So a little bit under a thou of an inch or one third of the size of a human hair. In other words, it's pretty darn good. Um, I'm actually shocked that it's as good as it is. I mean, I was expecting, I, I mean, just looking at it, I didn't think there was a lot of wear in here, but this is dang good. So game plan, um, I can't help it. I'm, I'm gonna try to make it better. I mean, that's just me. Plus, there's no scraping pattern in this at all. This is just directly ground. Both surfaces are directly ground. I think that it'd be nice to put a scraping pattern on here. That's gonna give some, some room for some oil to move around. It'll actually will wear better. You won't get as much sticking of the ways together. You get two perfectly flat surfaces together. They wanna stick. If we have that scraping pattern on there, it kind of breaks it up and you're sitting on some high spots and it will wear better. It actually won't wear as fast as it will if it is like it is right now. So, and, and plus we can get in here with the straight edges and we're gonna, we'll probably see some patterns show up even with these small differences just reading. We're gonna probably see some patterns and we can get this thing scraped in a little bit better. So game plan is, is I'm gonna get out uh, my straight edges I'm gonna get those calibrated on my surface plate. We're gonna come over here, we'll blue these up and we'll scrape in uh, these bottom surfaces. Once I get everything scraped in, we'll check it with the Kingway tool again to make sure that everything looks good. And uh, from there, we will then put the table up on here and we will use this as our master because it will be scraped in and we will scrape the table where it blues up nicely on this. And again, we'll be in good, good shape. That's the game plan. 
So anyway, this was just kind of the inspection stage of this. We'll be doing some scraping coming up. I know some of you are ha happy to hear that. Some of you guys are probably sad to hear that because some of you guys have told me you don't like watching scraping. I think it's cool, but uh, I'm a nerd. So what, what can I say? Yeah, another nerd over <laughs> here. So anyway, very pleasantly surprised. Uh, this machine is in excellent condition from a wear standpoint. Uh, to be the age that it is, um, my guess is, is that I don't know the, the background on this, but I doubt very seriously this, this machine was in a production environment. My guess is, is this machine was probably in a maintenance shop somewhere and it got used occasionally uh, for doing some type of maintenance work. Uh, it wasn't like it was sitting there cranking out parts all day long every day or, or you'd be seeing a lot more wear than this in here. I'm Again, I'm blown away that uh, there's no more wear in this than what there is. And when we get to straight edges on here, we may see a little bit different story, but right now it looks good. So there you go. I'm gonna get out my, um, my book. I've got a book that has, you know, what is the acceptable uh, variations in these numbers that I took. This machine very well may be in spec right now, factory spec, I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm gonna go get that book and I'm gonna look them up because uh, it's, it's pretty, darn, pretty darn good actually. So I'm gonna go grab that book and we're gonna look that up and let you know. That'd be good for a 60 year old. Yeah, I wish I was in as good shape as this machine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I went and dug up the specs for this machine uh, out of Schlesinger's book on rebuilding machine tools and what is our testing machine tools, I guess is what it is. And it gives you the specs on what is an acceptable amount of, of um, differences on these and for this level work for the two axes that we're on basically it comes out to uh, as long as it is less than two and a half ten thousandths per foot uh, it's in spec so that's what 250 millionths of an inch so again tiny tiny amounts and I've also ran this thing back up and down the machine three different times and comparing my measurements. And yeah, there were very small differences from one pass to the other, but they pretty well agree with one another. Again, these bubbles on these levels, they're, they're only so accurate, but at the same time, they're extremely accurate. So the, the resolution on them, and I've kind of averaged those together. And basically what I'm seeing is, is um, from the back way to the front way, it's about three ten thousandths per foot uh, out, maximum. So again, from the lowest reading to the highest reading. So yeah, so what is that? Uh, 50 millionths of an inch out of spec, not bad. And then on the length, uh, it's actually even better. Uh, I mean, I measured, well, it, I, again, averaging out my, my numbers, uh, what I come up with, um, I think it was, uh, six thousandths or, or six ten thousandths is what they average. I said nine a while ago, but again, I kind of did it multiple times and averaged them together. It's over five feet. Um, anyway, what, what it comes out to when you divide it out over the five feet, it's only about 1.2 ten thousandths out. So that is in, within spec on length in this direction. Yeah, it's, it's right there on the, the mark. But bottom line, it's in very good shape. So I'm extremely happy, and um, <clears throat> I think what we're going to do is, uh, not in this video, but upcoming, we're going to get in here with the straight edges, blue these things up, and uh, see where they're at, and yeah, I'm going to scrape them. I mean, they're, they're, I'm probably just going to, uh, well, I think what I'll do is I'll probably just uh, go ahead and, and blue them up just like they are, and then we're going to put a blind scraping, basically put a scraping pattern up and down both sides are on all surfaces and then we're just gonna come in here and tune it in. I don't think it's gonna take a lot, uh, we'll see. So anyway, again, very happy with the measurements, looks good. Haven't measured the bottom of the table, but we're gonna scrape that into this. This will become our master once we get this uh, knocked out uh, and we'll go from there. So anyway, looking good so far. Guys, uh, I think that's gonna be a wrap on this video. That's really kind of what I wanted to accomplish was just kind of do this exact measurement that we just did and uh, check it out. So with that, 
that's going to be a wrap. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are always greatly appreciated. Hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted. And as always, a big, huge thank you to uh, the supporters of the site who support on Patreon and PayPal, etc. It allows me to come out here and take the time to shoot these videos for you guys and share what's going on in the shop. And with that, guys, we're going to sign off. We'll catch you on the next video.